Meow. I was gonna my name is Swing Point, and I would like to thank you for 20,000 subscribers. <laughs> That's a ton of people, and way more than I ever imagined was actually possible. I know I've said that before, but it's because the number keeps getting bigger, and I just keep sitting here going, how did this happen? And I don't understand a lot of how it's happened. I, the only thing I know is that it's because you have put in so much effort into the channel and that you've been sharing things and you've been telling other people about the channel. That's what makes it grow. Whenever you do an interaction, when you like or comment or subscribe, that leaves a little tick in YouTube's mystery wonder bar of algorithm and that makes it so the channel pops up a little bit higher. Anytime you share it with somebody else on Facebook or Twitter, that goes into the algorithm and that keeps making the channel boost up even higher than it would have been without you. So when I say that you actually do something to help the channel, I totally mean it. And because of all the effort that you've been putting in, I went ahead and I made a video that has been requested quite a bit. And it is sort of a setup video. I went very briefly over what my setup looks like from my view and what it looks like on my computer screen. I didn't go super in depth into how I do things because there's tutorials out there for those types of things. I just wanted to give you guys a very brief idea of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis to deliver videos to you guys. So I know some of you guys are excited to see that, so let's get straight into it. How's it going everyone? My name is Swingpoint. And welcome to my room. I'm commentating over this as I watch this, so this is going to be an experience for both me and you. I, I recorded this on my iPhone, so that was just disgusting, so that's why I'm re-recording now. But let's just take a look here. First off, you'll see my very, very ghetto soundproofing, which is something I realized I needed to do after I moved into this room. There's my setup. It's really just... Some stuff on top of a fold-up table, it's really not that fancy, and that's Casey's bike, because she won't get rid of it. And here is the... Notorious Decorations Wall. There's all sorts of things on here, and I could give you a story on... Just about every single piece. But, that would take way too long, so we're just gonna focus on a little bit down here. These are my little Larry the Cats that my friend Kayla made for me. There's one for... Each major... Christmas character, I guess. The reindeer, the Santa, the elves, the snowman. And then here is my Slender poster. I'll let you guys read the notes. One of my friends made this for me. Actually, a couple of my friends did. And it is one of the coolest things ever. It was when I was a CA, and they were my residents, so... It was really very kind of them to make this, and it's something that I have not gotten rid of, even though I've had it for a couple of years. <laughs> Over there is my fan because I need that to cool down because I have to keep the door shut because Larry doesn't leave me alone when I record. So when my room gets really hot because I always have it shut. That was my computer. If you want to see the specs for it, you can look in the description or on Tumblr, both of which you can access in the description. All right here's my Wii U, my PlayStation. Oh god. Oh god, where am I going? Where am I going? Okay, there's my lamp. I need my lamp to light my face. <laughs> Otherwise, the quality would be really bad on my face, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Here's my Minotaur, he guides me through the scary tunnels of horror games. Oh, and here's the best part. Here's my webcam, this is what you guys see me through. My webcam is mounted on top of a PST can, which is on top of a Spongebob brick, which I have painted to look like Spongebob's butt crack. <laughs> Here's my microphone. It's a Samson C01U. I don't recommend it. If you're gonna get a microphone, go for something like an AT2020 or something else. It's way, way too putsy. It's a Logitech keyboard and mouse, nothing fancy. I got my headset. It's a Turtle Beach X12. I use it for everything, even on my PS3. I got adapters to make it so I can plug into there. My PS3 isn't here right now because it's in the other room because Casey uses it for Netflix. But, once again, my Wii U and my PS4 are over there. I use my iPad every once in a while for mobile games, and here's just a random collection of books. <laughs> so, I'm gonna try to give you a quick runaround as to what I actually do when I record. So, first things first, I usually have a blank slate here. I don't have all these three screens here, so it looks just like this. So what I do is I open up OBS, so then I open up one instance of OBS, and then I open up another instance of OBS, which is where all the trickery comes in, because people probably don't know that you can do that. And then after that, I open 
Audacity. That way I can have a separate recording away from my OBS recording because the one with OBS, there's a little bit of noise in the background and for, if for some reason OBS doesn't pick up my voice, I lose pretty much the entire recording. So I do Audacity to get better quality and to have it as a backup. And in case any of you guys were wondering how I get two instances of OBS, here's the trick. You go to properties, it, uh, it opens up, and you see this little C slash la 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 all that crap. You put dash multi at the end, and then you can open up as many as you want. It doesn't work with every single program. I've tried, but it does work with OBS. And then you have to have a desktop icon to open it up, so you just double click it each time. And you might be wondering why I have a 32-bit version and 64-bit. The reason I have a 32-bit is because when I live stream, you can have a notification that shows up when someone follows or when someone donates or something like that. And that only works on the 32-bit version, does not work on the 64-bit. So that's why I have a 32-bit, just for live streaming. I'm not gonna go into the settings that I use for OBS because that would take longer than really what I'm wanting to show you guys with this video. But you can kind of get a gist of everything that's going on. I have a different profile for the webcam and a different profile for the recording that I have for my monitor and then Audacity is running you can take a look at all this stuff, anything that interests you. My Samson C01U that I use, I have it at a volume of, oh, I have a volume at 90 right now. Oops, let's bring that down. <laughs> Usually I go 85. I must have had it at 90 because I was recording Mario with Casey. So now this part's going to be a little bit different because I usually am not recording while I'm editing, but what I do after I get done recording is I open up this little guy called Premiere Pro, and then you see this. So this part's a little bit different because I usually do not edit while I'm recording. But I'm going to slide this over so I can see myself on the other monitor because that's really nice for recording, having two monitors, especially if you use OBS because that way you know if you're actually recording and you're not just getting a black screen. But then yeah, I open up Premiere Pro and then I do I do all sorts of stuff in here. This is where pretty much all of my editing happens for videos. I do every once in a great while something for After Effects, but the majority of what I do is done here in Premiere Pro. I used to use Sony Vegas Pro 12. And it's the worst thing ever. It's not the worst thing ever, but don't... If you have a choice between Adobe Premiere Pro and Sony Vegas, you're like, which one do I pick? Go Adobe Premiere Pro, you'll be much happier. Your program will not crash as much, and you'll get skills that are more marketable because no business uses Sony Vegas, or very few do. Many more businesses use the Adobe Suite. And then I have this usually pushed out onto my other monitor. That way I can expand it down because my list of stuff can get pretty long because I'm not the most... I don't organize all my stuff into folders like I should. Like some of them, you can see these bins here. But I usually don't waste that much time with it because I usually kind of have an idea as to what I want to do. So it usually just sits on the other monitor over there. And then here's the most recent Last of Us that I did. As you can see, there wasn't much going on in this episode. The Last of Us is usually pretty easy to edit because you guys have told me that you don't really like seeing a whole lot of editing in The Last of Us. I do it every once in a while, but the majority of The Last of Us videos are pretty straightforward. I do a little cut every once in a while, but pretty easy to get those out. The majority of the videos that I make are not like The Last of Us. The Last of Us, I... I would consider those my break days. Those are days that are pretty easy. <laughs> now, as you guys can see, there's a lot more editing that goes on with Mario 3D World, or the majority of my videos in general. Corpse Party takes a long time as well. Those take so long to edit because I edit for it every single time they speak, seeing as how I talk over them so much, that way you guys aren't getting confused with their speaking. So there is literally tons and tons of cuts that look like this up yeah, in like, here. Come on oh, oh, be a plans. Gotta jump over stuff. Be a cat, you'll be fine, see? <laughs> so yeah, that was from the That's most hilarious. no 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 that was from the most recent Mario 3D video. But like I was saying with Corpse Party, there's tons and tons of little edits which makes it take so long. And I add all the ghost effects and things like that. I usually let all of my videos sit into one file, which is not a good idea. You should have backups and separate files for each one, but I get lazy. And I could also go into depth as to what I do for all my edits, but that would take so long. And half the time, I don't even know what I'm going to do with my edits beforehand. But in case, one thing that some of you guys might be wondering who aren't actually into video editing is how I get my outro at the end of each video. I don't recreate it every time because that would take forever. I do this little thing where I have my nest here. I have a nest. That way it comes up up top, that alphanumerical thing. And then I just go outro nest and then I drag it right here. And just like that, there it is. And it comes through. And then as for my kitty, I had him on a green screen, and I have a green screen pulling him off. So here comes Larry. And that's how it overlays on all of my videos. And then I have a nice little template right in here that I can go ahead and pop a video right in there. So let's say I put this right here, and then I want to put it in that little box at the end that I have for the, for the people who want to subscribe. 
I want to make a little preview video, so all I do is drag over one of my templates I made, pop it onto there, and voila, it pops right into that box. I don't have to resize things every time. I already have this pre-made. So like I was saying about Larry, he's on a green screen. You guys never see that because I always have it keyed out, but, but in reality, he's not sitting there on a transparent background. If I turn it off, as you can see, Larry is on a green screen. So that's one little trick that I use to get him to pop over the videos. Turn that back on. And something you guys may or may not know, most of you know this, but I usually have a little Larry sitting in the bottom right-hand corner. Really, all I do to put a Larry in the video is I go ahead, Larry in video. I literally have a nest set, Larry in video. I take it and I just drag it somewhere in the middle of the video and go boom. I don't really pay attention to where he pops up. I don't even know where he is in most of the videos. I just throw him in there and well, I, you guys can find a Larry next time you go into a video. So after I do all my edits, I export it into Adobe Media Encoder. I'm not going to really show you guys that because all I do is click Q and then I let it go. So there's not really much to show you. After I get done doing that, or actually while I'm doing that, I usually start working on my thumbnails. Which, as you can see, the most recent thumbnail was my The Last of Us video with King. All I did for this one, it was really simple. I found a picture of Ellie, a very, very big one, and I zoomed it in so it was just her nose. <laughs> some thumbnails take much longer, some thumbnails are real quick, it really just depends. I'd say the thing that takes the longest with thumbnail making is not the actual- <laughs> I was gonna go with his lips but that didn't work. <laughs> I would say the thing that takes the longest with thumbnails is not necessarily knowing how to do things but ne but more of a not knowing what I want to do. That makes sense. I, a lot of my time with thumbnails is wasted. Hmm, do I want to do that or do I want to do this? Same with my video editing. I know how to do pretty much anything you want to do, but when it comes to the editing process, the thing that takes so long is figuring out how I want to present it and what I, I want to do. That takes forever. So then after that's done, you get done with your video editing, you get done with the render, you get done with the thumbnail, you open up Google Chrome, you go over to YouTube, I have it set on my dashboard so you'll probably see my views and such, and then you just go right on over here and you click upload, and you just go find a video, that's really all there is to it. And as it's uploading, I put in my description, I put in my title, I upload my thumbnail, and I give it the tags that you are allowed to put into the YouTube video. Another big part of what I do is I try to make sure I keep up on comments. Now, I say that with not having caught up on comments over the past three days. That's something I planned on doing tonight. As the channel has grown, I haven't been able to keep up with them in real time. It's more of a sit down and do a bunch of comments all at once because there's just too many for me to keep up on them in real time. So what I do when I go up to catch up the comments, you can see every, every comment I comment on. I try to find the spot where my head stops popping up, and then I just kind of try to take a look at where I am in terms of how much I have to catch up on, and you can see all the way down there is where I have to catch up to, so it's going to be a while tonight, but I'm going to try to catch up to all of these, and I could just go on like this, and you guys see how many comments I catch up on. I am, I have a lot of scrolling to do still, and I, I make a strong effort to make sure I comment on all of these. Now, not all of these are unaddressed. I did comment on a bunch of them when I uploaded the... There we go, when I uploaded the montage recently. But I, that's usually what I have to do is when I sit down and then I go ahead and just try to get a bunch of comments addressed because you guys are really important to me and that I know that your interactions are really what drive this channel forward. So I make sure I make an effort to sit down every once in a while and try to, try to catch up on all of the comments. So that was a little bit of a preview into kind of what I do every day. I know I didn't go super in depth into a bunch of things like, so some of you may be wondering, well, swing point, how do you get your face cam in the top left-hand corner? Or how do you make your audio sound the way it does? Or how do you sync up your video with your audio? I, I, know, I know I didn't go super in-depth, but I feel as though a lot of those things are covered in tutorials that are also out on YouTube by people who put a lot of work into making tutorials such as that. So please, if you are interested, go watch tutorials out there. People have the resources out there available for you. And I guess one other thing I really wanted to stress is, as you can see, there's nothing that's that fancy about what I do. I'm just a guy who has a table <laughs> with a computer and just really likes making videos if it's something that you want to do you can do it too i i really want to encourage you if you guys have anything you want to do it's probably not as complicated as you may think it is you just have to give it a shot and you'll start learning there's no good time to start something like youtube or some other hobby you're interested in 
you have to start now and eventually you'll get the skills that you need over time to really get good at it. When I started making videos, I didn't know anything about anything when it came to making videos. Didn't know anything about editing, barely knew anything about recording. It was all very, very new to me and I taught myself all of it. It's stuff that you can learn. You have the resources available to you for free on YouTube. So if you do have that interest, please go ahead and give it a shot because you can do it. You just have to believe in yourself. That is the biggest, biggest, biggest part. You have to believe in yourself and you have to be persistent because if you give up, you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to be good right away. You might not be good within a few months, but you will get good at what you do as long as you stick with it. And that doesn't just apply to video editing. It could be anything that you're interested in. So please give it a shot. So one more time, I really just wanted to thank you for everything that you've done to help boost this channel up to where it is right now. I know we are going to keep growing. You guys inspire me to keep going because I'll, I'll be honest with you. There are days where I'm just so tired because I, I, I work a full-time job and then I come home and I'm like, oh God, man, I got to make a YouTube video. And then after I, after I go through that feeling, I think about you guys and it just makes me want to keep going. It makes me want to keep doing these things. You are what inspires me to keep pushing forward. So thank you for everything that you've done and everything you will continue to do in the future. This channel has a very bright future ahead of it and it's all because of you. So I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Meow. Come on! Come on, my name is Swing Coins and I'd like to thank you. 15,000 subscribers on this channel. Every single vlog that we do is pretty uh, proud. sit down here. And I try to think of ways to thank you. A different way.